They officially became squadrons of BGSs. Under air training and air command, the chain of command of these units are regulated through the 22 train group. Uh, and we've already seen assets from the 22 group today from the King Air and Red Arrows uh, fly pass. And on behalf of the AOC, I said officer commanding number 22 group, the volunteer gliding squadrons and central gliding school, which is the CDS. We take responsibility of the two flight training school to respond in RSI in January 2014 under the command of uh, Group Captain Jay Middleton. Well, this particular aircraft, the it's, um, it was built in Chester in 1951, so it's, uh, you know, it's a fair age itself now, and uh, serving at RAF Old Sarum, RAF Cranwell, and predominantly in RAF Newton, with both seven AEF and East Midlands UAS, and uh, I believe she's still on this. But even the mighty Chippy um, eventually had to make way for a more modern sign as the uh, Scottish Aviation Bulldog was uh, cascaded into service following its uh, withdrawal from service. And Bulldogs, which I incidentally flew while a student at Queen's University of Belfast with the Queen's University Air Squadron, I have to say it was a completely fantastic experience that was a real joy to fly that aircraft. And that aircraft gave way to the Grove Shooter, of course. And it is the Tutor T1 that continues to serve the AEFs into the foreseeable future. Yes, the uh, board target are relatively short uh, time span with the uh, AEFs, but um, going back to the gliders today, it remains the responsibility of uh, Central Gliding School CGS to Trent back in the, uh, in, in the start of the 50s. In the 50s, what restriction was king, it's linked to the, uh, was a manufacturer's choice with aircraft such as the uh, Type or T38 Grasshopper, which was basically a seat structure wing. The open cockpit uh, single seat T30 Prefect, T45 Swallow, which is not dissimilar in appearance to a civilian K8. The uh, tandem two seat open cockpit T31 Kirby Cadet, which was the original tutor. Probably one aircraft that uh, is probably more identifiable than any other aircraft. That's what all aircraft do. But the Chippy is well known for its, uh, for its, its oil, smell of oil, which is a wonderful aroma. And uh, the BMF incidentally retain it on their fleet. And I understand that you need to familiarize and train incoming pilots to the squadron on the ground handling characteristics of a tail dragger because uh, it's not something many of the younger fast jet pilots in the RAF have much experience of. That's absolutely right. And the, 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 yes, in 1971, uh, the, the operator a unique motor glider, which uh, was called the T61A, again built by Slingsby. This was named the RAF by the RAF, the Venture T1. And uh, the sole Venture T1 is that proved its way to a in the Egg Deck Village, along with uh, the Vigilance, which uh, replaced the uh, uh, Venture back in 1990. Okay, well, that's the chip. I mean, what a fantastic display from John Higgins and uh, the chip on Rams. And uh, sheer history and its importance in flying train training is not in any doubt whatsoever. It's more. And I really do mean this more than earned its place here today. Ladies and gentlemen, the Chipmunk. Thank you very much for that display. Training, obviously, are one of our themes. And here is the problem. People under training are the learner drivers of flying. So you need to know where they are and what they're about to do. Now, you and I would say, well, let's go and paint the fast red L on the aircraft. But... Of course, you need to paint it so it's easily observed. And we saw the red and white uh, paint job on that aircraft. Of course, it's been through yellow, silver and yellow, silver and fluorescent orange, and now through the red and white, and now black, which you'll see on trading hall. Right, bit of a change of plan. After our chipmunk display, we have the BBMF.